DaVinci Resolve has a ton of different tools and features, and you could sit down and learn them all, but you would never use them all in your day-to-day -day work. There'll be a couple of tools that you like more than others, some that you just can't live without. So I thought that maybe I should show you the couple that I use consistently. And don't get me wrong, everyone will have a completely different set of tools that they constantly use, but these are a couple that I use. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre preset tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. So the first thing is within DaVinci Resolve, we obviously have the bins, which are like folders, and they're very powerful in what they do, but I, I, I don't use half of the uh, you know, power that, uh, that are behind them. But I do use them for a couple very simple things. Uh, so I first started out just dropping stuff in here, right? It's obviously gonna ask me if I wanna change it. I would take whole folders and do the same thing. I would just drop them right into here. One thing that I was, I ended up having a lot of content over here, right? And it was kind of a pain in the butt. So what I do now is I will take all of my content and let's say like this lumberjack video, I will, or folder, I'll drag it over here into like where the bins typically are. And once you drop it over there, what it'll do is it'll have your whole folder structure. So if you have multiple folders, it'll make bins for all of those inside the one bin. And then whatever the media is that's inside that bin that DaVinci Resolve is able to read, uh, it'll drop it all here uh, within that bin. So I feel like that's very powerful. And we'll get back to why I do this and how that works with a whole nother aspect of um, the editing style that I typically do. But uh, just dropping stuff onto, I, it, it's such a simple thing, right? Dropping stuff onto the bin area um, makes a bin, you know what I mean, from the folder structure. So if you have multiple folders inside of a folder, it'll make all of those bins and it keeps things really nice and neat. When I used to do a lot of editing for bigger projects, what you would get is you would get a location and then you would get cards and then you'd get camera or you would get cameras and then you'd get cards. And so all that information would be broken up and you would be able to go through it here and it would, it would keep whatever the time and someone spent uh, making sure that all of the media was in the proper folders and everything. It'll keep that whole structure over here, which is awesome. Uh, so the next one is, let's go back to some of that other footage because I feel like we had... All right, so we have some... So here is the perfect example of some stuff. So like, let's say we have some content here, right? Of, uh, we have locations, we have people. Um, and so like this first one, maybe there was someone in... And maybe it's not a wedding scene. Maybe it's like um, an interview or whatever, maybe. But there's people, right? And there's uh, information that has to be blurred. What I like to do is I like to mark them with something that's bright, a bright color, and I mark those clips, right, with a bright color. So now what I when I go, when, I, when I'm pretty much done with my whole edit, let's say I go through here and I, you know, I edit everything. Great. Yeah, right? Uh, once I'm done, cause you know, the edit process can take a half an hour, take an hour, take two days, whatever it may be. Uh, you might forget about this one scene that you, while you were editing, you were like, oh, there's private information that you don't want to get out. So I like to mark it. And when I go into the color page, what you'll see over here is you'll see that little green thing, right? So you'll be you know, coloring all of your shots and then you'll see that little green dot and you'll be like, I need to do something with that. If you don't know how to blur here, just simply grab a power window, drop it on whatever it is. Then you can go like that, track it. Okay, I don't wanna track the whole thing for you know this video. And then you go, boom, blur. Now it's blurred, the track it is blurred and so on. So that's a workflow that I've kind of done. Another thing that is pretty cool, let me see if I can find a, f a clip that would uh, work better for this. Here, here, here would be a perfect shot. 
Okay, so let's say that we wanted to blur just this little red car right here. All right. And, but we, we could say, okay, green blur, right? But you're not going to know exactly what that thing is that you want blurred. So what I can do is I can say, okay, let's go right here where it's pretty much in the frame. And we have this clip selected. I'm just going to click this button here. And if we open this up, you'll be able to see it right there, right? So now we have our little marker in the clip, right? Because we want to do this clip. Maybe you have stacking clips, but you want to make sure it's just this clip. We have this clip here. We have the marker selected. Then if we go to this drop down and we go into annotations, now what we can do is we can draw a little circle and we can click in here. And we can say blur this car done. So now when you go over, maybe you have someone else doing it, or maybe you're doing it, but you might forget what it is. We now know that we have to blur that car that's there, right? Um, you don't have to be concerned. Oh, is this going to show when you when you render? No, none of the annotations or any of that stuff will show uh, in the final render, but you do have that there for while you're uh, watching it. Obviously, if we play, you're not gonna see it, but uh, when you when you uh, stop on it, we can see it and we can see, okay, blur this car and we can see uh, all of the information for that. I feel like that kind of also stands out a bit, uh, especially if you're working with a team and you need to you know let them know specifically what needs to be removed. Maybe it's like that cup in that one very popular show, the coffee cup. Uh, but yeah, so that that's that's one thing. <clears throat> All right, so then the next one, let's grab some uh, more footage. All right, let's say we have this shot here and we have a couple of other shots. And then we want to duplicate that over here. So maybe we have a shot where we want to zoom in a bit. So we could simply just come over and say zoom and maybe change the position so we get it to look how we want it to. Uh, but then maybe we have something similar, you know, another shot over here. Uh, but we want to add those that the same values that we have over here. So what we would do is we would copy it. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to hit Control C. If you're not on Windows or you're not sure what your keyboard shortcuts are, you can just right click and go to copy. And then once you do that, we'll come over to the other one. I'm going to hit Alt V or you could right click and you could come into paste attributes and whatever the shortcut is over here. So we're gonna paste them, and then we're going to say the things that we want to copy from the one clip over to the other, because we wanted to do the position, because that was one of the things, and we wanted to do the zoom, and that's going to be the X and Y scale as well, right? So we'll do that, we'll hit apply, and now we have the same thing over here. So it saves a lot of time. I remember when I was first starting out, I would type in whatever the difference was to make sure that they were the same, but this just saves a tremendous amount of time. And I do use it quite often for different projects. The other thing that I, I guess I could say here that I, I, I like to use a lot too, let's actually reset that, is I liked to uh, come over here into the transform. And when you have this on, you have these controls here, which then you can move around the shot and you can pull these out and you can proportionally scale it and everything else like that. I feel like that saves me a lot of time because for the longest, I was just like, you know, sliding this in and out all the time for everything. When I found out about these controls here, it saved me so much time being able to, you know, adjust things. You can also use this if you want to do some type of animation. You would just have to obviously turn the keyframes on where you want it to start or wherever. And then, you know, you could change this to kind of work for your project however you want. And now I have those two locations where now it's kind of doing the zoom out, even though we're moving forward. But yeah, so that is uh, how that works. The on-screen controls and uh, copying um, stuff. So the other thing, uh, we brought in the lumberjack, right? And one of the things that I like to do, because I was saying how sometimes we would have a location and then we would have underneath location, we would have the different cameras and then we would have different camera cards. So what I would do is I would right click in here and then I would go create timeline from selected bin. We would name it whatever, pretty much like whatever the bin name was, we'd hit create. What that does is it takes all of the content here 
and it slaps it on the timeline, right? What that enables us to do is see everything. Obviously, you don't want to look every look at everything like this, but what we can do is click on this button, click here, and you could look at it this way by clicking here and we'll go like our main timeline this is the timeline that we were working on. And now we can go back and forth between the two and we can see all of this. This isn't ideal for how I like to work. So I'll close the second timeline, but having this still enabled, we can come over here and we can click this button, which now we can stack our timelines. So I'll come into here and we'll open up that other timeline, which is the lumberjack timeline. And now let's go fit. I can play this at let's say 8x speed and I can look through all of my, let's say this is my uh, B-roll and say, okay, which shots do I actually want to use um, from this? Uh, maybe it's this one. So you could simply just come in and you could color it and we can come through. And if there's any other shots that we would want, maybe it's this one here. So we could color that as well. And then you can pick your, your uh, the, whatever the clips are you want. So let's say these two, I'm just going to copy them, come up here into this timeline and say, okay, let's add those in. Um, and now we have them added in on here. Um, so that's how I would typically uh, go through like one whole uh, bin and being able to add, let's say like B-roll and stuff. Um, geez, I keep saying B-roll instead of B-roll because the black magic raw. Anyways, um, I, I was just writing an article about it. So, um, but yeah, so uh, this is kind of how I like to work, having two different timelines, my main timeline, and then like this other timeline, because then me and you know someone else can sit here and we can look through all of the stuff that we have added so far because they'll be colored and um, you can, you know, simply add it instead of like clicking. And then, you know, if we remove this, we can get the two views and we can like watch all of this and then click and then watch and, and so on. Instead of doing that, I like to do it this way. You can also, uh, you might say, oh, well in here I can trim, you know, well, you could simply just come into here and say, okay, I'm going to uh, trim this as well. Maybe I want, where, where's a good shot? Yeah, right when the guy goes to pick it up. Okay, I'll just cut there and then I'll bring it and I'll cut. So then I can take that, copy that and bring it in. And now it's just that little piece, right? So you can cut down here too and then bring it up. Um, same sort of thing that you would do up here. Um, there is a thing within uh, this with I don't know if you guys have ever made custom uh, columns, but there is a column to see like the content you've used. So like, let's say you're working on a project and you don't want to reuse B-roll. Um, you can, there is a um, one of the columns that you can pick within the custom uh, column selection. You can pick like to see like things you've used versus haven't used. Uh, down here, you won't really be able to see that except for that's why I color it as well. So then I know um, like, oh, this little piece right here, I've used that, so I'll have that colored. Uh, I don't know if I co covered how the colors work, but you can come up here to DaVinci Resolve and then go into Keyboard Customizations. I have my colors all along the top, the F keys. If you come into here, you can see I have apricot, lime, purple, and tan. So you can uh, pick that um, within your um, tools and then you can pick all of the different colors. If you haven't seen all the colors that exist, you can either come into here and come in the colors and you can see all your colors here or you know here are all the same colors as well. I think there is a way to like make custom colors as well. I think I was reading something about that, but I'm not too sure. I've always just used the colors that are built in anyways. Um, but yeah, that's kind of... Uh, how I do that and see multiple views. I feel like it saves a ton of time, and especially when you're working on really big projects and you just wanna go through stuff because the other thing I can do down here too is I can pull in that other, okay, this one doesn't have one yet. Um, whoa, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. Right click, boom. I can go like that and then I can get that down here as well. So maybe I have like all of my different uh, cameras for a location because I'm building out a sequence for a location I could do that or maybe I'm working on something that's a bit smaller so I just have uh, 
down here I just have all the different types of uh, b-roll that I would need um, so you have that as well so yeah that's kind of how I how I've how I've worked for quite a while you can add more than two but I just kind of stick it to two unless you have a higher resolution monitor that would make things a little bit easier uh, I typically like to record um, in this resolution so things are a bit easier to see um, for like uh, demonstration purposes and stuff so yeah that's kind of what I got um, that I could think of for different things that I use where you know when I was first starting out for a good amount of years I didn't use any of these techniques and I just kind of was like okay I'm just gonna keep doing what works doing what works and then after watching a couple tutorials of people doing other things and I actually got this whole system of having things stacked when I was actually using Premiere a long time ago. Um, their UI is a little bit more uh, customizable, uh, but you can still do a lot of stuff with DaVinci Resolve. So I then, you know, implemented to start, I, or I started using that kind of stuff in DaVinci Resolve. And, you know, ever since I started using it, I, I haven't stopped using it. Just one of those things, you know, everyone edits differently. Everyone has a different way in which they set up their system. Everyone has a different way in which they color things. They, people use specific colors for specific things. Um, people use markers, some don't use markers. Some like to draw on annotations, some don't. Um, so um, kind of, you know, create your own style of editing that works best for you. When you start to work in an environment where other people are also going to be working off of your project, whoever is the lead of the project, pretty much dictates how the project should be laid out, the colors that you're gonna be using and that sort of thing. So going from project to project, it might be a little bit different unless you're always working with the same group of people. Um, then that whole group will always be using the same thing. Or if you're just working by yourself, you know, you can make your own way in which that you want to work on a project. If, you know, some people would see my projects that I have where there's three cameras or four cameras, if you're counting uh, GoPros, and you know maybe six cards you look at one of my projects and there's like 20 timelines and you're like what the heck is all of this people work differently and it's kind of whatever works best for you and whatever makes you most comfortable and whatever can get a project out the door as quick as possible uh, yeah these are a couple of things that i use every day hopefully you found them interesting maybe you didn't know about some things maybe you did maybe you have some things that you use that uh are kind of like a little bit different than the things I do. Write them down in the comments. I'd be open to hear them. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys in this one. Uh, again, my name's JR. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. See you guys later. Peace.